So I recently posted this color grading video on my Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, and it went somewhat viral with so many people asking me for tutorials, how I really made an iPhone video look so cinematic. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I did that. Now, apart from just the color grade, I'm gonna give you a secret bonus tip at the end of this video, which is gonna make every video you have super cinematic. And of course, all of this is going to be done in DaVinci Resolve, so let's launch that up. Right click, timeline, create new timeline. Now, depending on whether you're working with a vertical timeline or a horizontal timeline, you're gonna choose that specific setting. For me, I'm gonna uncheck Use Project Settings and their format, I'm gonna make sure to switch to 4K resolution. And like I said, if you're doing vertically, you're gonna check Use Vertical Resolution. And the clip I'm gonna be working with today is this one that I took at the Louvre. So it's a very short four second clip that I'm gonna be dragging in and dropping into my timeline. So once you drop it into DaVinci, you're gonna notice that the colors don't look like the log footage we took earlier. So this was captured with the iPhone 15 Pro Max in Apple Log. But when I bring it in here, the colors look normal. It looks like Rec. 709. But this is something that can be fixed very easily. So on your clip itself, you're gonna right click and scroll all the way down to input color space. Change that to project. For me, the project is Rec. 709A. And just like that, you've got your log footage back. Now drag in your clip and head over to the color panel. This is where the entire color grade is gonna take place. But the first thing I'm gonna change is under my scope. So I'm gonna change it to histogram so I can easily manage the exposure of the shot. Now this was a pretty dark shot, so the exposure is gonna be pretty helpful. First things first, we're gonna create the three nodes as we do. Now I'm gonna skip through this part because I've done a full tutorial on that. Click up here somewhere to check that out. This is basically the base conversion for Apple log footage to Rec. 709. And just like that, you can see the before and after conversion from log to Rec. 709. And if you take a look at the histogram, you can already see after I've converted it, it became quite a bit darker in the histogram. So we're gonna fix that within our base node. So head over to your base, go into the HDR panel and under global, bring up the exposure to a point where it looks well balanced. For me, that's about at 256 here. Then I'm gonna to go to my primary color wheels and under log, I'm gonna bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows slightly. The reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to spread out the image, as you can see on the histogram there, a little bit within that range. So I have more to play around with later during the grade bring down the highlights a little bit more. Then I'm gonna head over to midtones under log and I'm gonna bring that down a little bit to add a bit of crunch to the midtones. And that looks pretty decent. Next, create a new node after your CST node, which I'm gonna call Halation. So this color grade is not very complicated. It's quite basic, actually. We're just taking a digital, sharp-looking image and turning it into a more cinematic, film-looking footage. And for that, Halation is very, very helpful. Now, before adding anything else here, I'm gonna right-click on the Halation node, add node to that, and we're gonna add a parallel node. I'm gonna rename this node to be Glow. Next, with Halation selected, we're gonna go over to Effects and search for Halation drag and drop that on and within this you're going to see some effects already start kicking in especially in the brighter spots of the image now for those of you who don't know halation is basically like a film flaw essentially but we're trying to bring that back to simulate film look uh, it's basically a bright glow that comes off from the brightest parts of the image. It's like a red hue you'd see around candles, around lights. Uh, so when you have that, it makes it look a lot more cinematic and film looking rather than very digital and clean. So I'm gonna mess around with the threshold here as well as the dye layer reflection strength. And you can already see the effects kicking in around the edges. So I'm gonna quickly zoom in here to 200% so I can show you exactly what's happening when I move the strength around as well as the threshold. Now you can play around with the normalization, the film saturation level until you find something that looks pretty good to you. And then you can increase the spread to actually see what this is really doing. Now if I turn on and off the halation, you can actually see the effect it's having. It's making it look a lot more organic and film looking. Next, I'm gonna scroll down to secondary glow and increase the strength of this very slightly because I want that light that's coming off of this, this bright object to affect the darker settings as well because if it was really shot with film camera, you'd see that diffusion a little bit more. So that's what we're doing here. For the glow, don't do it too much, maybe 0.15. Spread it out a lot more so it spreads throughout the image, giving you that diffusion look. And then lastly, for the color of the filter, we're gonna add a warm orange tone. Now take a look at it with the helation turned off and the helation turned on. Massive difference goes from digital to film. Next, you're gonna select the glow layer and then go under effects, search for glow. Drag and drop that on. And here, basically what we're gonna do is tie in the glow from the helation to the final image. So we're gonna scroll up to the top. All you're gonna be touching here is the shine threshold, which is which parts of the image are gonna be shining. And then the second thing is gonna be the spread. The spread is obvious, very, very obvious. It's how much the glow spreads out. 
So what we're gonna do here is isolate the glow, the shine, to these specific parts that are connecting to the ground. So you can see that that's the part right there where I would want this glow to be emitting off of because it is a reflective surface. So I'm gonna customize this to match just specifically that portion, touching that a little bit with the spread. And I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. And then scroll down to your color filter. This is where we're gonna make it an orangish reddish tone to make, again, it match that halation. Click OK. Then scroll all the way down to your global blend and reduce this just a little bit. We're gonna bring it down to about 80%. And I think that's looking very good with them turned off and turned on. Huge, huge difference. This is how you go from a digital look to a film. Next, what we're gonna do is create a new node after the halation and glow, and I'm gonna call this grade. Now, this is where we're gonna grade the footage to give it that color look that we actually want. So I want a more golden slash bluish look. Uh, so we're gonna do that all in the grade node. So within the grade, we're gonna come down to our curves first, and I'm gonna tie in some contrast, bringing in the points down a little bit for our shadows and mid-tones, so we can make the highlights pop a little bit more, just slap in some of that contrast and make it crunch a little bit more. So if you can see, uh, what it really does is tie in the glows together. Next, we're gonna come into our gain under our primary wheels tab, and I'm gonna bring up the gain to a warmer tone somewhere around there. And then for our lift, which is our shadows, I'm gonna bring it down to a teal, a greenish teal look, because I think that adds that authentic film cinematic look. Now, if I turn this grade off and on, you can see how it crunches up that glow and grade together to make it look like it was actually there and not something I've just slapped on later. But what I really wanna do is make the color of the whole video look more orangish, more golden really to make it look more fancy and give it that rich tone. So I'm gonna go back to our base node and under our primary color wheels, I'm gonna increase the temperature to about 150. And you can see it adds that warmth to the image and it makes it look a lot fancier. I think that's the best word I can use to describe it. And that's what it looks like, the grade before and after, love it. Next, we're gonna make a new node after grade and I'm gonna call this lens flare. Now, a lot of people ask me where I got the lens flare from. It's built into Resolve. No external plugins, everything built in Resolve, but this is Studio. So if you're on the free version, you'll have to find an alternate for this, but it would work about the same. So with your lens flare, go into your effects again and search for lens flare, drop it on. Now here you're gonna have a bunch of different flare types to choose from. For what I'm going for is the anamorphic sci-fi look. So it's the modern sci-fi, it gives you that straight line anamorphic look, which you can move around. Now you can place this wherever you want, you can place it dead center, that's up to you. But I want this to look more authentic and more realistic and more subtle, I guess. So for that, I'm gonna drag the source of light off the frame to the left because that could easily be a light post or a lamp or something. You're gonna go over to the settings of the flare, colorization color, tap on that, and then here we're gonna customize the color to be a bluish, tealish color. I think I'm gonna go for a bluer tone and then click on OK. And nothing's changed yet, but you're gonna go for your colorization result and drag that all the way to 100. And there you can see the colors changed fully to blue, giving you already a very awesome look and then take a look at it before the flare and after the flare. It really adds some character to the image, makes it look like it's been shot with a really expensive anamorphic lens, but it wasn't, it was just shot with my iPhone. So on my last layer for the LUT, I'm gonna go into my LUTs and drag on the King LUT. And I got this from Filmrite, I'm gonna link that down below. And already it looks really nice, but it's a bit too strong because I've already added a grade node before. So what I'm gonna do is go into my keying options and for the key output, I'm gonna reduce it down to about 55% because that's where I think it's looks nice and clean and not too cheap. Now with that done, I'm gonna go back to my grade node and add in a little bit more contrast and make the shadows darker while making the mid-tones and highlights pop a little bit more, giving me that beautiful tone. Now, this is pretty much done, but because the video was shot handheld, the camera is gonna be moving up and down, but the mistake here is the flare is gonna stay static. So what we're gonna do is very quickly just animate the movement of the flare to kind of match the movement of the light. So for this, we're gonna go over to the position under our lens flares, create a keyframe, tap on the arrow on the left side of the video playback and scroll down to open FX overlay. We're gonna get back our control for the light source. And then it's as simple as moving forward a few frames, repositioning the lens flare for that frame, moving forward a few more frames, repositioning, move forward, reposition, you get the idea until we get the flare moving exactly with the footage. And that's my final image. I think that looks absolutely amazing. Now the grid is done. You have a perfectly cinematic looking video, but like I promised, there's a secret sauce tip that I'm gonna tell you at the end, which is how we can turn a non-slow-mo video into a slow-mo video that looks extremely buttery smooth. Now this clip, as you can see, is just four seconds long. And that's not long enough for it to be cinematic. And also everything's moving too fast. So Command R or Control R on the clip, drop down the menu and choose chain speed to 50%. 
Now, if you play back just like this, it's going to be very choppy slow motion. You can see that the frames are very static like that because you don't have enough information in between because the footage was shot at just 30 FPS. But what you can do is go over to your inspector on the right, scroll all the way down to V time and scaling, change the V time process to optical flow and change the motion estimation to speed warp. Now this is going to destroy your playback. Look at that. I'm at like 4 FPS. That's perfectly fine because when you go over to your export and start rendering, the final result is going to be absolutely buttery smooth. Incredible. Look at how the people are walking in the background smooth. The water moving smooth looks incredible. So that's your life hack for shooting non-slow-mo video and turning it into buttery smooth small. So there you have it. My color grading technique for creating super cinematic film looking shots using just your iPhone and DaVinci Resolve. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe for more color grading tutorials like this and some life hacks in the future. I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, take care.